Our next speaker is Fernando Musa, who is the CEO of Braskem. Mr. Musa joined Braskem in 2010 as Vice President of Strategic Planning. And since 2012, he's been CEO of Braskem America, the business unit responsible for operations in the US and Europe. Under his leadership, Braskem integrated the assets acquired from Sunoco and Dow and launched important strategic projects to strengthen the company's presence in the USA. So please welcome uh, Mr. Fernando Musa from Braskem to the stage. Thank you. Thank you. Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Uh, I would like to start thanking GPCA for the opportunity to come here and uh, share a little bit about Braskem's uh, story. And I think it's a very interesting story of transformation that uh, might bring uh, interesting insights for how uh, a company, small company, coming from a pretty large economy, Brazil, uh, the eighth largest economy uh, in our industry, uh, where uh, some attributes that are very important for success were not present. We don't have advantage feedstock. Uh, there is no uh, strong uh, IP technology framework for development uh, in the country. Uh, even though it's a large economy, it's still a developing country, and therefore consumer needs are still evolving and compared to the more developed uh, world uh, are not as sophisticated as we see uh, in the North America, European and parts of Asia, for example. So I'm going to share with you a little bit about how um, uh, coming from that base, in 15 years, Brass can transform itself as one of the largest players in uh, our uh, part of the petrochemical industry focused on commodities, becoming one of the largest uh, resins producer in the world. So this is uh, a quick highlight of uh, the story uh, using our EBITDA evolution coming from $500 million when the company was created back in 2002 to $3.6 billion last 12 months uh, at the end of September uh, this year. As you can see here, we see a sustainable growth. Uh, as Todd mentioned, it is a cyclical industry, so we do see some of the cycles uh, uh, impacting our results, but uh, it's a very positive, strong uh, growth story. And uh, I'll go through some of those phases and some of the learnings we faced in which one of those phases uh, that could be relevant for many companies here uh, in, in the Gulf. As I said, Braskem was created uh, 15 uh, years ago, back in 2002, through the merger of six uh, companies, uh, Brazilian companies, non-integrated companies. Part of them were uh, in the ethylene production. Part of it were PE and PP and PVC producers, non-integrated. And the first phase in from 2002 to 2004 was clearly dedicated to the creation uh, of this new company, the integration of this new company. Uh, something that Todd also mentioned, a lot of emphasis on building the right processes, building the right integration tools so that we could optimize, increase efficiency, increase productivity to extract as much value as possible from uh, those assets. After uh, this uh, two, three year period, uh, we realized that despite integrating six players, we were still a subscale player in our industry that was becoming more and more of a global industry. Uh, uh, the Brazilian uh, petrochemical and chemical sector was still very fragmented and we had limited product portfolio, especially uh, when we thought about technology differentiation in our car products, polyethylene, polypropylene, and PVC. With that, we started the second phase from 2005 to 2009, uh, continuing the process of integrating the Brazilian market assets and is expanding our presence in South America through basically M&A. Uh, leading to a situation where we uh, achieved leadership in Brazil, leadership in South America. We increased our scale, 
but uh, we started to face uh, new barriers uh, for our development. Uh, the limited size of the domestic market and the volatility of it is started uh, to, to be a barrier given the size we reached. The fact that uh, we did not have access to advantage feedstock uh, in our home country uh, started to become uh, uh, also a barrier for future profitability increase and growth. And the economic and political uncertainties of Brazil and South America uh, became more and more relevant as we became a larger company and had to deal with more global competition. Uh, so to deal with those uh, limitations, um, Brascam started uh, um, a third phase of development with new investments in Brazil, leveraging some of the uh, uh, gaps that ha demand had created. Uh, it led to the construction of a new PVC plant, a new butadiene extraction plant, um, another investment that makes us very proud, which is the green polyethylene plant, which is one of the few uh, aspects of our industry where Brazil does have comparative advantage in the renewable-based feedstock. So we are now producing uh, polyethylene from ethanol or renewable feedstock, and uh, this is a, a clear differentiation for us. But it also was a period where we um, uh, moved north uh, with the acquisition of Sunoco uh, in 2010, the polypropylene businesses owned by Sunoco in the US, the acquisition of Dow's polypropylene business in 2011 with two plants in the US and two plants in Europe, and the start of the construction of our joint venture in Mexico, a fully integrated 1 million tons complex uh, from ethane to polyethylene together with IDESA, a, me a Mexican company, which, uh, as Todd mentioned, uh, is benefiting significantly for the shale abundance, the shale competitiveness, as the feedstock uh, uh, for the Mexican project is linked to uh, Mont Bellevue US pricing. Uh, we also, um, uh, uh, through that process, uh, gain more scale and uh, started to face new challenges for us. Business or cultural integration. Uh, in the first two phases, all the integration was done in Brazil. It was much easier, uh, same culture, same language, same market. Uh, now we were operating in the US, in Europe, uh, in Mexico. This creates a lot of complexity and I'll talk more about it. Uh, but uh, it also gave us important leverage points uh, to position us for the future, leveraging now scale uh, and geographic diversification that helped a lot to mitigate risks coming from uh, country-specific situations. Um, for example, in the last two and a half to three years, Brazil has been going on through a, a very severe recession with GDP declining 3.5% back in 2015, 4% in 16, uh, very I mean, close to zero growth in 17, despite that significant economic uh, uh, um, uh, headwinds in our home country, uh, as you've seen in my first slide, very successful results for Braskem. And thanks to this diversified portfolio from a geographic point of view, we now have access to new future uh, uh, opportunities for investment, and I'll talk a little bit about it. So uh, today, uh, Brascam is one of the largest producers of resins in the world, uh, the number six. We're the third largest polypropylene player uh, in the world. We're number seven in polyethylene. Uh, we're the largest uh, resins producer in the Americas uh, by a, a significant margin. We have industrial operations in four countries, and um, we do have uh, feedstock diversification. Uh, we crack NAFTA in Brazil, we uh, crack ethane in Brazil and in, in Mexico. We buy a lot of propylene in the US and Europe from multiple sources, including uh, some coming from PDH, therefore, with some of the advantage feedstock in, in North America. And now we're ready for uh, a continuation uh, of our mission to serve our clients, uh, develop our assets, focus on productivity, and uh, provide sustainable returns for our shareholders. Uh, this is our uh, global footprint. Um, over 8,000 people around the world today 
manufacturing uh, activities in, in four countries. Uh, we do serve customers in over 70 countries around the world. Uh, a lot of focus in the Americas, as I said, but more and more starting to, to have a global presence given our, our size. So some of the learnings uh, from that journey that I would like to share. First, uh, internationalization is a very important driver for value creation in, uh, uh, for Braskem, but it does bring uh, a lot of new variables and a lot of new complexities. Different regulatory environments, legal environments, political environments to deal with, uh, different market and customer needs and dynamics, different languages, work culture, time zones. Uh, so all these were uh, issues that we had to deal with uh, that uh, increased the complexity, uh, forced us to change uh, the official language of the company. We're in the middle of the process to, to making uh, English uh, the prevailing language, at least for top management discussions in Braskem from Portuguese. Uh, this uh, will help us attract new talent and enable us to bring more expertise uh, as an example. But uh, we also learned that internationalization is more than just buying assets. Uh, it provides access to new markets. It provides access to feedstock diversification, bo both from a molecular point of view, but also from a supplier uh, and therefore new partners uh, point of view. It provides for market and business uh, product diversification. Uh, it does bring cultural diversity. We have learned a lot uh, from uh, bringing the US-based, Europe-based, Mexican-based teams into our family. Even though Brazil was built through a lot of immigration and therefore has a very diversified population and a very open culture, bringing those new teams uh, to be part of the family created a lot of value bringing different perspectives on how to tackle problems and therefore led us to find new ways to solve the old problems we were facing. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, all this translates into clear uh, business benefits, clear profitability improvements through the experience and knowledge sharing, through integration of production, supply chain, logistics, coordination uh, among all our plants in the different regions. Um, um, we are much better equipped today to serve the needs of our global clients and the converting industry in plastics especially is becoming more and more of a, uh, a global industry with many players acquiring and investing around the world and uh, our strong base in multiple regions enable us to be a credible supplier globally for those people and as I said new sources and opportunities for future growth. We also learned through that process that it's very important to have a clear vision to where we're going, the straight uh, road that Todd mentioned. Sorry, Todd, I'm picking uh, on many of your points, uh, but they are uh, very uh, uh, relevant for, for our story as well. So it's very important to have this clear road and clear path, but uh, it's also important to be open to opportunities and constantly be looking at your own capabilities, the strategic objectives, the opportunities that present to us, and a continuous process of prioritization, uh, putting together our ambitions, the scenarios for the industry, the scenarios for our uh, de development, and coming up with clear prioritization around value creation, feasibility, alignment with the strategy, risk sensitivities, but also uh, very important and maybe not uh, explicit here, our ability to execute uh, in those different opportunities is a crucial aspect for prioritization. Uh, the other key learning is that the strength of our purpose, the belief that we have that Braskem can and will improve people's lives by creating sustainable solutions for chemicals and plastics, and our very strong corporate culture provide the base that has been crucial for the integration of those new teams, new assets into the Braskem family. And our culture um, is very human centric. We pay a lot of attention to the people aspect internally and externally. We see all our external relationship with customers, suppliers, government communities as being uh, uh, people's relations more than business relations and understanding people's emotions, people's interests, people's 
uh, concerns are crucial for everything we do. We have a very decentralized and uh, with a lot of plan delegation uh, business system that facilitates the growth and internationalization. Uh, we're very focused towards driving results, productivity, efficiency, and social responsibilities, uh, sustainability are crucial aspects to what we do. And uh, the purpose and culture have been a uh, fundamental pillar for our success as we grow. And we put a lot of emphasis in communicating those, uh, uh, describing those, um, explaining those, making sure that the new teams that become part of the family understand those so that we can leverage this as the strong assets that they, they are. So to close, uh, now Brascam, after this uh, very successful journey, uh, is uh, preparing uh, and, and ready for uh, a continued path forward. Um, uh, as Todd mentioned, a lot of uncertainty for our industry, but we have very clear strategic objectives. Uh, productivity and competitiveness are crucial. Uh, we've been putting a lot of effort over the last 15 years in building processes that increase our productivity, our effectiveness at everything we do with the ambition to really becoming the first quartile operator in everything we do when compared to any company around the world in our sector. The second aspect of our strategic drive for the future is continue on a geographic diversification, growing a global footprint outside of Brazil, uh, increasing our competitive scale, uh, enhancing our leadership in the Americas, but given where w the stage we reach now, starting to look at other regions as well for opportunities of growth so that uh, our international opportunity uh, operations will become more and more relevant. Uh, and uh, today we're basically 50% of our revenues in Brazil, 50 uh, outside of Brazil. In, and we do expect that in the near future, our home country becomes less and less of a relevant part uh, uh, of the global business for Brascam. Third is feedstock diversification. Uh, it's crucial for our industry. Uh, we, there's too many uncertainties out there to place single bets on one feedstock. So we believe feedstock diversity, flexibility in accessing feedstock, both from a molecule point of view, for, but from a supplier base point of view, is crucial. We believe in a balanced feedstock position and we'll continue to develop uh, our asset strategy towards that. that. And finally, I mean, all this is possible if we have the right governance, the right reputation, the right uh, people working for us. So we, uh, we work very hard. And uh, this is a great opportunity for me to reinforce uh, uh, our position as a global leader and a very respected company in Brazil that provides us with the assets, uh, the strength, the people, the team, the opportunities, the partnership to continue our journey to better serve our clients around the world to better uh, uh, work with our um, customers, with uh, our uh, suppliers around the world uh, in our journey to um, uh, strengthen our position as a global leader in our focus segments. Thank you very much for your time and uh, looking forward for the panel discussion.